Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're gonna to be talking about my top 10 favorite freeze-dried foods. Let's get to it. What is the best survival food? Well, that really depends. If you're on a budget, rice and beans and mylar bags. If you're on the move in very rugged, challenging terrain, you're gonna want an MRE because it's comprehensive, it's nutritious, and it's totally self-contained. You don't need water or anything like that. If you want something which is really condensed, just pure energy, get some Daltrex bars or a tack bar or perhaps even survival tabs. Now, freeze-dried food is by far the least cost-effective option, but it also tastes the best it lasts the longest and it's very low maintenance. All you have to do is add water. Now there's quite a few companies who make freeze dry food nowadays. They tend to fall into one of two categories, companies that make bulk or wholesale freeze dried foods and companies that make individual portions or number 10 cans. I personally stay away from the wholesale stuff because quite frankly, it's not that good. I tend to go the route of individual portions because if all else fails or doesn't fail in the case of SHTF, I'll still have something that I can use as a meal replacement and it's not going to be tedious for me to have to eat it. So in anticipation of this review, I haven't eaten all day because I wanna be able to eat as much as possible in doing this review. That's a lie, I actually ate this morning, this afternoon, and about half an hour ago. So after this review, we're gonna be well into bulking season. Let's get to it. All right, so number 10 is the Chicken Sierra Pasta. The thing I like about Alpine Air they put the amount of calories right on the box, on the package, I should say. It's affordable. I really like this one because it's just got a lot of zing to it. It's got a lot of tomato zestiness. Um, I've tried about four or five of their meat varieties, and I would say that I like this one the best. It's a little less forgiving in terms of taste if you don't prepare it properly. So make sure if you're getting Alpine Air, prepare it as per the instruction. There is a desiccant packet in there. Generally speaking, I would say that looks pretty good. It looks pretty appetizing. There's not a whole lot of chicken in there, but there's a generous amount. Texture isn't as great as I would like. I put a bit too much water in there. Like I said, Alpine Air is not very forgiving when it comes to this. It has a very creamy tomato sauce to it. This has 100% of your vitamin C in half the package but it also has 30% of your sodium in the whole package. So that's actually not really that bad, considering you would need three or four of these to survive in a day. Now up next is Mountain House's granola with blueberries. The great thing about it is you can eat this cold, so you don't need warm water. You really don't need warm water with any freeze dried food, but obviously it's gonna make most entrees taste better. They go heavy on the blueberries. That's one of the keys to making any freeze dried granola dish taste good is going heavy on the fruit chunks because it can really mask the dusty kind of dry taste of the powdered milk a lot. Pull out that desk and pack it. See the powdered milk in there? Lots of blueberries. That is the key to this kind of recipe. Yeah, so you really need barely any water for this one. Get a nice blue color to the milk with those blueberries. Has a really nice look to it actually. Granola and blueberries, excellent dish. I strongly recommend it. In the eighth position is Backpacker's Pantry Fettuccine Alfredo with chicken. I usually give Backpacker's Pantry a bit of flack uh, because when compared to Mountain House, Mountain House generally tastes better. There's bigger chunks of meat, bigger chunks of food. So we have 1800 milligrams of sodium in here, which is very high. That's about 76% of your recommended daily intake of sodium. But we also have 44 grams of protein. Uh, like I said, 720 calories, so you eat three of these, you're good to go. Now, when I use 2,000 calories a day as a benchmark, if we're talking about a disaster crisis situation, you're likely going to need more calories because you're gonna be doing more physical work. Unless you're just bugging in and trying to ride something out, like there's a pandemic and there's martial law or something like that, then you might not be burning a whole lot of calories. But if it's winter time and you gotta chop wood to heat your house, you're gonna be using a lot of energy. So you can see very small, small chunks. Backpacker's Pantry does it this way because they save money. The bigger the chunk of food, the harder it is to freeze dry the food. It has a really uh, macaroni craft Dinner-like cheese smell to it. Who doesn't like craft Dinner? Even if you say you don't, I know you're lying. 
Let's uh, put in two cups of water, which is what this calls for, and let's see what happens. If you put too much water, it's not the end of the world with this one. It can be a little soupy and it'll still taste good. Black pepper and parsley. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? On a backcountry excursion, on a cold day, inside a wood stove tent, you crack one of these open, man, you're gonna be in heaven. The whole journey, snowshoeing across a lake to go find a good campsite, freezing your ass off, chopping wood, it really is all worth it just to savor something like this out there far away from civilization. To have a little taste of civilization away from civilization, perhaps that is the high point of pleasure. A little bit of survival philosophy for you. Number seven is Mountain House Lasagna with Meat Sauce. I hope you like cheese because there's a lot of cheese in here. In fact, it's annoying how much cheese there is in here because it sticks to whatever utensil you're gonna use and it's very difficult to get off. Tastes really good, excellent taste. Big chunks of noodles, big chunks of beef. See the difference right away in the size of the chunks. So that's the Mountain House difference right there. This one is a big dish. I don't even know if it's all gonna fit in there. Just soaks up all of that water. 99% of the moisture has been taken out of the food. So it instantly rehydrates. It really does taste like one of those frozen dinners, you know, that you buy at the grocery store, but better. Mountain House knows what they're doing, man. You can definitely taste the fact that Mountain House pre-cooks their stuff. Tastes really, you know, processed, prepared. Easily coming in at number six is Happy Yak Beef Stew. Big chunks of beef, big chunks of potatoes, all natural ingredients, very few preservatives. Happy Yak doesn't even like putting desiccant packets in their food. That's how purist they are when it comes to making uh, food. It really does taste like a, a home cooked freeze dried dish. Now the packaging is smaller, so it's a little more difficult to eat it out of the bag. Look at those giant chunks of beef in there. This is why Happy Yak is so awesome. Giant chunks of beef, potatoes. Look at those big potato flakes. You don't get this in any other type of freeze dried meal. This one takes a little bit longer to hydrate because the chunks are so big. So when they say wait 10 minutes, you're gonna wanna wait 10 minutes. For any dish which has finely minced or diced portions, you can pretty much eat it right after you pour the boiling water in it. But with these, we wanna give it more time. It's a little potato heavy, but there's a lot of other stuff in there too. The carb is gonna be the, the main staple of the dish. Happy Yak also sells beef cubes that you can mix in here if you want even more beef in it. Once again, with the Happy Yak and Backpackers Pantry, because it was not pre-cooked as a meal, a lot of the, the different flavors have an opportunity to, to come out sporadically throughout the bite. Just has a really non-salty, natural taste to it. Number five is Chili Mac. You absolutely cannot go wrong with Chili Mac. I can probably eat this every day and never get tired of it. It's that good. The problem is there's 82% of your recommended daily intake of sodium in here and we're only looking at 580 calories. Of course, you can eat it out in the bag. The bag's a wider form factor so you can get in there with a spoon. It's a Mylar bag so it is resealable like all of the bags, I should say. Looks pretty good, super lightweight. It's almost weightless, this stuff. If you've never experienced freeze dried food, you'll be amazed at how light it is. Honestly, for Mountain House, I usually just eyeball the water. I usually don't even measure it out because no matter how much water you put in there, it's gonna taste good. So you can see that just come to life right away. Look at that. Looks delicious. Tastes really good. You don't need sodium for this dish. The texture of the macaroni is quite close to perfect. If you ever made Kraft Dinner, you know that if you cook it too long, it's gonna be a little too soft. I better slow down here because we got a few more to go. Coming in in fourth place is the Happy Yak Pad Thai. Now this is just an excellent all around dish. You're getting about 1,060 calories. So there's a lot of calories in here. The one downside with the Happy Yak, the best buy date for this one, for instance, is November 18th, 2021. Now this is freeze dried food. Freeze dried food technically could last up to 30 years. The problem with some of these dishes is, like this one, it has peanut butter in it. The peanut butter is not gonna last nearly as long. There's fats in there that are gonna go bad, but the actual noodles and everything else that comprise the Pad Thai, it's gonna be good for a long time. 
lots of nutrients in this, vitamin C, vitamin A. This is probably the highest calorie dish in terms of freeze dried food that I know of, even more so than the Mountain House mac and cheese, which is around a thousand calories also. All of these Pad Thai dishes come with a peanut butter, whether it's Backpackers Pantry, I'm not sure if Mountain House has one, but look at the size of those chunks of vegetables in there. Delicioso. If I pronounce that right, this probably ain't even gonna fit in here. Get a lot of food in here, man. That's why it's a thousand calories. The one thing that I'm gonna say about Mountain House is that they cook all of their ingredients together beforehand. So you can see this isn't cooked. It's a bunch of ingredients mixed together. Now there's some advantages and disadvantages to that. The Mountain House has a very consistent taste. It all marinates together. This, you get distinct taste. So it, it's really an opportunity for the different ingredients to pop at various times while you're eating it. Maybe that's why it tastes more like a home cooked meal with the Happy Yak as opposed to something which has been more processed. So the peanut butter package in the Backpackers Pantry is better than this. It's actually uh, kind of like uh, a tube so you can squeeze it out. Whereas this, you kind of just have to squeeze it out like that, I guess, right? You could probably use a utensil or something like that. But when you're on the go, if you're out and about bugging out, running from marauders, you don't want to be doing that. And I really like the fact with this that they use whole noodles. Most other companies are gonna dice these noodles up really small. Probably could have let this sit a little bit more, maybe put a little bit too much water in there. This is certainly a sweeter of the Pad Thai varieties that I've tasted. So if you're wanting something a bit more savory, then you might wanna go with the, you know, Backpackers Pantry. A little bit more challenging to eat because of those noodles, but some people like that. Honestly though, I think I put too much water in this. I don't think it's supposed to be this soupy. Nonetheless, still tastes amazing. Coming up next is the Mountain House Breakfast Skillet. Now I'm pretty picky when it comes to freeze dried eggs. I find they taste really powdery and grainy. Mountain House found a way to do it, which actually tastes really good. The only thing is with this one, you wanna make sure that you're putting the exact amount of water in it. Or else it's gonna get runny and it's gonna be kind of soupy. This one has hash browns, scrambled eggs, pork sausage, pepper and onions. So it's fairly comprehensive. This packaging also burns really well. Whether you burn it or they burn it at the garbage dump, it's gonna get burned. So if you need a fire starter, these Mylar bags work really well. Maybe not so much a fire starter, but if you need to revitalize your fire, put that on there and poof, it's gonna go up real quick. You see in there, some nice big chunks of hash brown, scrambled eggs. You'd be surprised at how good rehydrated hash browns taste. They're not gonna be crunchy, but you could rehydrate this, then throw it into a frying pan if you wanted it to be a bit more crispy. We'll let her sit for a while, come back to it. Looks like I used the right amount of water because it's nice and fluffy, that's what you want. It's very ambitious of them to try this because you're talking about hash browns, eggs, some sort of meat variety like ham, a bit of veggies, all in a freeze dried dish, which is gonna be a mushy mess no matter how you do it, but they do it in a way where it still actually looks appetizing. Now it has a bit of a cardboard taste to it. I can't quite explain it. There's just a strange aftertaste to it which when you're out in the woods, you don't even notice. Now, before Happy Yak uh, came into the picture, this was my number one meal. This is Pad Thai with Chicken Backpackers Pantry. Now, I would say that generally speaking, the Happy Yak Pad Thai tastes better, but the fact that this one has chicken in it is a winner for me. Backpackers Pantry also has a vegan Pad Thai. I made a video maybe a year and a half ago where I thought that that was the number one freeze dried meal that I ever had. So this is basically that with chicken, but then of course Happy Yak comes along with uh, better ingredients, bigger noodles, more sizable chunks of food. And so it just is generally better. Pad Thai with chicken, let's check this out. So now with the Backpackers Pantry, what you get, get a bunch of stuff in there. Once again, Backpackers Pantry is not pre-cooked as a whole. But you can see the noodles are much smaller. Some people might prefer that because it makes it a little bit easier to eat. That means it's gonna be more mushy when all is said and done. But as you can see here, we get a little care package. We get some, some lime. This stuff is really good in there. Now, I think this is part of the reason why I like uh, the Backpackers Pantry Pad Thai. 
just a tiny bit more than the Happy Yak. It's because of that lime. It really makes it zing. This is the Sriracha. So add a little bit of that in there. I'm just gonna add the whole thing. Real peanuts, which is another plus. So this is where you're getting a lot of your calories. Now these aren't gonna keep that long. And then you also get your peanut butter in a package, which in my opinion is easier to use. I actually think there's a bit more peanut butter in these. If you've never had pad thai before, I, I know you might be thinking, oh, that seems kind of nasty putting peanut butter on noodles. But trust me, it's a very unique tasting dish. It tastes excellent. Now let's check out pad thai with chicken. A huge difference, right? Here's the pad thai from Happy Yak. It actually kind of looks like pad thai. Here's the pad thai with chicken from Backpacker's Pantry. You can see it has a lot more spice and finely minced ingredients. And of course it has chicken. That lime in there, it really makes a big difference in my opinion. It's got a lot of dimension to this taste. And the number one contender is the Happy Yak Mandarin Beef and Rice. I did a whole video on why I thought that this was such a great entree. In terms of sodium, you're only getting 26% of your sodium. You're getting around 700 calories. You're getting 34 grams of protein. So there's some good micro macronutrient specifications. And in terms of a freeze dried dish that doesn't taste like freeze dried food, this is it for me. The only thing that compares to it, and I don't have one here, would have to be Mountain House's pepper steak. If this was number one, Mountain House pepper steak would be like a 1.5. You can see those giant little mini corns, whatever the hell these things are called. Only problem with it, all that big stuff goes to the bottom so you can't see it. I think you get like big chunks of broccoli in there. I eat this when I feel like I want to eat something healthy and I'm in a hurry. I always go for the Happy Yak. If I want to be devilish, go with the Mountain House. By far one of their best dishes. I really wish they would do more meat and rice dishes. I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy. They could stand to put just a bit more Mandarin in there. Because I tell you, when you hit that Mandarin chunk and it meets with the beef and some of the other spices in the perfect amount, it's fireworks, baby. Freeze dried food really is the food of the future. You remember in Back to the Future when Marty goes to the future and he's spying on the family and they pull out that pizza and it's like this big and they put it in the rehydrating machine? <sighs> Not quite there yet, but really this is astronaut food. Space age food for a quite possibly space age faring civilization if we don't destroy ourselves. And if you didn't watch my last video on the 2020s, my predictions, you know, there's a 50-50 chance of it going either way. So that is my personal top 10 list for freeze dried food when it comes to taste. As I've always said on this channel, get your basics squared away first and foremost, rice and beans, long-term storage, uh, lentils, kidney beans, chickpeas, things of that nature. I'm gonna post a link to a video I did uh, prepping on a budget, getting, uh, I think it was 100 days worth of food for $100. Go and check out that video. Do all that first, and then you can start adding in things like this, which also double as great meal replacements. Now, they're, they are expensive, so it's gonna be an expensive meal replacement, but when you consider how much it is to eat out nowadays, to eat out in a way which is at least a little bit healthy, it's typically around the same price point. So anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section below and let me know if there's any other dishes you would like me to review on the channel. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. I think I'm gonna have to do some kind of Furious Pete eating challenge. Now, believe it or not, if we do the math, average of about 600 calories per dish, there's about 6,000 calories there. On a cold day in winter, if you're working outside, you're burning that much energy. That's a lot of energy for a day. So just keep that in perspective. This is one hardworking man in the winter time or woman macronutrient needs right here, all of this. And I tell you, after a long, hard day of work, I could probably easily burn through one, two, three. I'd probably get to here and then, you know, I would uh, have to take a 
two hour break and I come back for the rest. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com. We've totally revised our website. We only deal with quality products at the best prices and all of my subscribers get a VIP discount of 10% off the entire store. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive and the prepared thrive. See you next time.